Hi, welcome to Mama Fuel. My name is Anne Ferguson. I am your host, and I'm thrilled to bring you this podcast that was created to fuel every mama's heart, soul, mind, and body, and hopefully spark a dream or two along the way. My mission is to change the way that we mamas treat ourselves and each other so that we feel better, live happier lives, and change the world one happier family at a time. In the Mama Feel podcast, I'm sharing real, raw, and often funny conversations with amazing mamas from around the world to remind you that you're not alone and that you're doing amazingly on this wild journey of being a gorgeous woman shepherding small humans as they make their way on a beautiful planet. You are amazing, and I cannot wait to share this conversation with you. Let's get started. Hello, and welcome to this week's episode of Mama Fuel, the podcast. My name is Anne Ferguson, and as ever, I am so delighted to be in your earbuds or your car stereo speakers or wherever you're listening. (laughs) I am excited to share this week's conversation with you because I have as my guest a beautiful woman named Katrina Young, (laughs) whose very touching journey is one that went right into my heart when I heard her talk about it at an event earlier in 2019. She is a force of nature. She shines from every or every pore. I was going to say orifice, but that sounds wrong. Every, (laughs) every pore. She she just radiates. And I know that her story will touch you as well. So Katrina, thank you for being my guest this week. Thank you. Thank you for persevering. I really appreciate you inviting me. Um, equally, when I met you, I was amazed at this wonderful mum. To be honest, doing so much work to bring mothers together and to build a community. So that doesn't go, you know, people see that. And I just want to say thank you for that. And thank you for inviting me. Oh, thank you. I received that <laughs> with such gratitude. Honest, thank you. Saw that and- yeah good (laughs) so let's dive in and find out what does your life look like right now because i'm speaking to you in geneva you're in london i am right now on the truth desk it looks like a mama desk (laughs) i've got a sock a half a pack lunch but life right now looks like um me standing in my truth and my power and really I feel like I'm on the other side of some healing so you know like we they say what got you here is not what's going to get you where you need to be I actually gave myself permission to stop and decide who I wanted to be um not conforming to you know a job title a title for business and mum like I really needed to stop and this year the focus for me has been about listening um listening to people Listening to non some people's in their language, their tone, myself, listening to my body is in that anxious feeling and finding out my body's tuned for <laughs> in many ways. It's like if I if I'm in a situation, is it procrastination? Is it fear? Is it adrenaline? Um we get to an age where we really shut ourselves down, is we're mums and we're partners. I just really wanted to give myself permission to be and listen to myself. You know, do I want to do this business? Do I do the service? Do I want my kid to keep doing this habit? <laughs> or, or do I just want to stop? And I just literally stopped. Wow. That, I mean, we could just talk about that for an hour. So you, you live right now with your two kids who are roughly what age? Kids. So 18 and 10. 18 and 10. Okay. Yeah. And you have built a life that has <laughs> allowed you now, it's not something you yeah. were always able, able to do, but that has allowed you no, to do that no. thing that so many of us dream of. And I, as recently as two days ago, have said, I just want everything to stop so I can. And the list was pretty long. I was like, so I can do this. And so I can do this. And so I can, so I can you know, declutter. <laughs> so I can sleep until I'm not tired. So I can, so I can, you you have, you've done it. it. it you've totally. stopped and listened. I did. And, and you know what? I think it's that we always seem to be evolving. And I think that we don't actually stop and say, I'm so grateful. And also we beat ourselves up and feel bad about these mistakes. And I wanted to reframe that. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to reframe my mistakes as experience to truly got me to where I am. You know, I earn three to four times more than I did before. You know, I even experienced a domestic violence 
that because I gave my power away and I had to reframe that many of these things didn't happen to me. They happened for me because I allowed it. You know, everything is impacted by something else. So low self-esteem, you know, lack of boundaries, not standing in my power. But that spills over, right? You know, the kids know they can take the mic. You know, a client knows. And I looked at you know, my track record, I was like, if this keeps happening and it's a trend, it's not them, it's me. <laughs> so mm. I just had to really ask myself, you know, a friend literally just dropped down dead recently. And she was at the point where she was like, I just want to live. And we switched off her life support machine. And I was like, you know what, I want to live now. I'm not going to wait. And I'm not going to wait to have permission. I'm not going to wait until I've lost a bit of weight to get in that dress. So I have like a day of the week, two days, but I dress up like I'm going anywhere. (laughs) Even if I sit at my computer and work. (laughs) But it's so important to do it now because we just don't know when it's going to happen. And I love having a day to connect with my parents, have lunch with my mama, and not to let them feel like they're hurried. Even in some interviews, like have a structure. If my structure is too structured for some people. I'm like, okay, what's what's the universe want to teach me here? Let's be agile. So it was to understand that I can everything that you know some things are unfo- unfolding for me, um, and that removed the anxiety. I was literally feeding myself every day with anxiety. Now I've got to rush to school. I've got to rush home, I've got to rush this meeting, I've got to rush, you know, and I was just like, now if a client doesn't get something back, a client had a project, and it meant that it would affect all the rest of my planning, and she didn't get it in on time, so I said, you know what, I'm so sorry, sweetheart, this is going to have to go on to next week, you know, and it was my problem with people pleasing, but again, it was always attached to self-worth, and I'm finding that there's a vibration in me that's radiating. It's like people just know. And I said to my brother that when you stand up tall and you know who you are, people just feel it. Um, and I just walked around for many years as a poor excuse for myself and I simply won't do it anymore. Oh, I want to cheer. I want to jump up and cheer. Like, like, <laughs> yes, you know? <laughs> so, <laughs> back. so, so, okay. So let's, I've written down lots of things as you've been talking because I want to come back. I've, I've put a pin in a lot of that stuff. So let's go back yeah. to the beginning of your journey into motherhood because yeah. this was not a yeah. place of roses, was it? It's not been. I mean, the adversities. And I think that part of that was understanding that I needed therapy. And so I actually, being random, this in August, the summer holidays, everyone goes on a holiday. I'm approaching 40. And I thought, I'm going to book a week of therapy. I'm going to have timeline. I'm going to have NLP. I'm going to have massages after the therapy because my body will need to release this. And it was due to therapy. Some of the traumas that came up, I was just like astounded. I literally just keep skipping past them and striving in survival. And so my 18 year old is amazing. I had him when I was you know, a striver. I was already working and then I went back as an undergraduate and I started working in marketing. And then we came home one day and my house had burnt down. Mm -hmm. And it was horrific. That was one of the the first traumas I ever was because it was just like, we had no home. (laughs) What are we gonna do? And you know, I thought that that was the worst point of my life at the time. But afterwards a few years later I started to suffer from domestic violence and it was I wouldn't wish it on my worst enemy it was trauma it was gaslighting it was following it was threatening you know real horrific things I lost my voice (laughs) and for so many years I just lost my voice I started to survive and I realized that at that time overworking working and overworking was almost as bad as the self abuse or the abuse. Um, but most people like therapy, and at that time I didn't like it because I looked at it as 
looking every week to just sitting down with a therapist and crying. I was like, oh, that's not for me. I don't want to, I don't want to see this woman. She makes me cry. Mm. <laughs> so I just went into doing courses and up a business and things started to work. And I realized I was helping people and I thought I was away. Um, and then one day my perpetrator started again and he had a campaign of just hate but I realized actually I think I'm powerful than him what kind of person holds this kind of campaign of hate over 10 years and when they're actually in the wrong um so I released myself you know I released myself from having to feel guilty about it this is his actions his responsibility um, and I reframed it I reframed it for my children you know that I started to actually see him like a child and that if he knew better he would do it you know um and so I totally hold no judgment against him and that story but thing isn't mine and um, so I own my story now I own my experience and you know there's nothing more than being empowered and loving who you are where you are right now and that's what it is I think so many people you see it in people's eyes you know when you see someone um I think the other day and I was like are you okay and she was like yeah and I was like no are you okay it's someone I really don't know and I gave her a hug and I was like let's have a coffee and she was just like she just broke down and I think that's the problem that no one's asking us if we're really okay we're not giving ourselves the time to not be okay no it, it's important to try it out you know lean in I've I've had to develop things over the years, which I know most people probably, you know, they think it would, but I do self-development every morning and I do business development every day while I'm working. And then I have a bit of just listening to music that's, you know, classical pop, R&B, anything, jazz. Like, I just want to switch off and dance. But I was speaking to a friend recently who was going through so I just wanted to hurry past it she just wanted to numb it and I just I've developed a thing of leaning in so leaning in why in this way you know maybe it's because of this and just giving myself the opportunity to go to ground and let it out um it was Dr Joe Dispenza that you know I'm into his like breaking the habit of being yourself and so often you know we're not breaking that habit so it's been honestly pivotal and you can try and, and do everything in life but if you skip past the bit of yourself you won't we won't do it <laughs> I've learned that you know we won't do the business we we won't do the stuff you know you're with yourself all the time <laughs> And, you know, yeah, you, you are. And so many of us, I mean, we were literally having this conversation two days ago at time of recording there you go. and we were yes. talking about my search for a house and that I am thinking about moving closer to my kid's school to make it easier. I don't want to be driving yes. anymore for environmental reasons no. and time. And I'm yes. just not available yes. for that anymore. And one, my youngest daughter said, yeah. mommy, is it maybe that you don't feel like this house is a happy place and you want to go to another house to feel happier. And my response to her was, well, if that's the, my, and my husband was nodding and I said, well, if that's the thing, then I will still be in that hat. Like I still come with my stuff, right? Like we bring our physical belongings, but we, we are with ourselves as you say every day. And so how do you, how do you every find day. the ability to, you've named this a couple of times to, to, to get curious and turn toward those feelings instead of trying to just power past them, yeah. which we're like, yeah. we're encouraged to do. And, you know, you were saying that, you know, we don't ask each other how we are and actually mean it. No. If, if we even ask. And if, I said, yeah, if we even ask, it's, it's crazy. It, it's, it's, you hit the nail on the head. I send, I love you. I think sometimes when people meet me, they find me a bit odd because I'm like, I mean, I'm an introvert, but I do hug and I do say I love you. And I think, especially the English, they're not really like, love? You love? <laughs> it's just like, I mean, I just love you, you know? And I just think that life's so short. You know, you're, you know you've been around someone that just sucks the negative energy from you. Just like after you leave them, it's, I never want to be that person, you know? I just think we can change people's lives, our lives, by what we inject into it. And it was... 
I've always stood for it, but then there's situations where you have to wear money or you just have to do it. Now I'm literally doing my best not to be in that place. Like if I have walked away from a massive contract, you know, a lot of money, I have walked away from situations where it didn't feel right for me. You know, it made me anxious or it you know, went against my integrity. Um, you know, I've had online bullying. I've had so much, but I still stand for what I feel is right for me and my situation. You know, I'm all honest with them. And so, you know, you know what it's like. Even my doctor, when I went to him, I was like, my hair's falling out, I'm really stressed, I'm feeling this way. And he's writing something down and he said 40 milligrams. And I was like, I don't want antidepressants. I don't want to numb myself. And I'm not judging anyone that is, but I told him, you know, it's a business and my business is myself. I need to understand why I'm feeling like this. So I was just, yeah. And, and my fam- a lot of my family don't feel this way. <laughs> so well, I am and, totally and I, a minority. I think, you know, having lived briefly in the UK for, for two and a half years and coming to realize yeah. that there is that, and we've mentioned it before on the podcast, um, I've mentioned yeah. it with other guests, but there is that, that cultural um, brush it under the carpet, just sweep it under the rug, have some tea, you'll be fine, yeah. go down the yeah. pub, have a pint, yeah. you know, you'll be fine, mate. Absolutely. And actually, yeah, yeah, what, yeah, yeah. what <laughs> then comes out when you've been down the pub and have, you know, filled yourself up to the brim until 11 o'clock when they close, it tumbles out afterward. And it's really, oh. it's, it, it's very uncontrolled and it's ugly in the sense that people have all of these suppressed feelings at least it's what it looks like to me, all of these repressed feelings that it's true. come, come yeah. tumbling out in potentially aggressive ways, in very sad ways, in, yeah. rather than just, yeah. I say just, it's not a just, rather than people having the courage <laughs> no. and, being, and also being supported, right? Like you were in, an, yeah. in a situation of domestic abuse. You had yeah. two children. Yeah. You were yeah. persistently you know, gaslighted and followed and you, all of these things that you've named over a decade, Katrina, a decade, that's like a huge, that's a quarter of your life. And, and so, and here, here you are in the midst of it, somehow you managed to build a business and to, you were saying before we started that your, you know, your business was your therapy. And I'm curious to know, excuse me, in the middle of that, of, of all of that stuff going on, what, what support were you able to get or in conversely what support do you wish you had had from the people around you because maybe somebody listening is in a similar situation to the one you were in for that decade and maybe she doesn't know what to ask for or maybe someone is trying to offer support and she can't see it what would you what would you have or what did you receive yeah so the thing is you're actually right i where i came from like my parents are still together I come from a family, really beautiful, beautiful friends at the time. I'll say that he isolated some, um, but I was very functional. So his domestic abuse was all mental. So gaslighting messages, damaging the car, um, nothing in front of the kids, no kind of violence in that way. Very, very deviously done um and so I was like a highly functional person still operating as a project manager in a normal workplace so there are people that you may see that they they've lost the sparkle you're seeing them in the workplace they're breaking down and it's that's why I asked the lady is okay because I saw classic signs of what I've been going through so it would be that you know probably I didn't realize at the time but he wanted to affect my work so starting ridiculous arguments look at midnight so I'd be up till two o'clock so you know functioning my job made me really tired and so I think for me I have to be honest being very self-aware but I got a leaf through the door one day and it said is this happening is this happening then it's domestic violence because I'll be honest I didn't even know what it was <laughs> I haven't been around, I hadn't been around it. So the first thing is highlighting it. And I do volunteer to help women. So every year I give a scholarship to someone who has suffered from domestic violence to get on their feet. But there's so much work to be done, you know, because sometimes it's, they blame themselves. And then it's the skills, because sometimes a lot of women depend on the men. So they immediately lose. I mean, he doesn't give any support. And 
you know, we would probably not have to work hard if he adequately supported the, his child, you know, that would be fine. But of course, that's another way of controlling and, you know, it's domestic violence ultimately. Um, and so I kept it secret because I felt very ashamed. Mm. Um, I mean, my eldest son, he didn't see anything, you know, he was very clever, um, hands around the throat, you know, pillow over your head if you was you know just it was awful but at the time after receiving that leaflet I contacted um this women's charity and they were amazing and so they had some sessions at the time I was working part-time and they had sessions where you went in and you dropped the kid off or the kid was at school and it was the freedom program and they gave you a book and they talked through the domestic abuse and men came who had done it and women and because it's not just women that mm. you know men that domestic violence it's in same sex relationships it's in you know you know heterosexual relationships. it is every in every kind of shape and form sometimes mm. it's from family as well mm. and yeah. so what i started to do i was telling my friend the other day that when he i became empowered and when he would do something i would say this is abuse because the, the, what you're doing is wrong because it's duh, duh, duh. and he would just look at me almost shot but then the dynamics in our relationship kind of started to go because I started answering back I started standing up for myself but it's usually when the relationship's ending you know um and that's when I had my little one I even did a, a health and safety course a first aid course because I thought if he hurts me I need to know how to look after myself mm. you know it was just ridiculous but while I did courses, you know, you network, you meet people. And it became amazing. And I, the first business I set up was a beauty and therapy company. And I gave lots of concessions to women in domestic violence. And while you massage them, some of the, so many of the women had bruises. I did palliative massage. And it was amazing. It was just a real give back season. Um, and then the course is just, you know, I kind of, I did want to go back to my career and I, it just evolved. And I realised that actually I was getting results based on who I was, not who he said I was. Useless, ugly, stupid. It wasn't true. So, you know, for me, it's if they identify that it's wrong, do seek help and don't feel, find, you know, there's Samaritan over in Geneva or this is global right so yeah. wherever you are there is you know there are anonymous charity lines uh, and honestly I called those at the beginning um when I was pregnant and it was really a, a terrible state time I contacted Samaritans and they were just so so lovely I mm -hmm. still remember the day um but I do believe that it, it does start with self-responsibility and that means telling someone no letting someone know you know that it's not okay and seeking the appropriate support and it may mean that it is an external service um to put things in place which is what i did in the end i did get an injunction so yeah you know. and that's you know having having spoken to quite a few women who have been in situations of gaslighting or situations of being under threat or being physically harmed it's it is, I am so relieved that you were able to stand up and say no, and that you weren't met with deathly violence, because that can also happen, that you stand up, say no. Well, and... it's the other way, yeah. yeah. For me, it's almost not knowing this person is, it just, just scare me sometimes, and it's it's almost like a threat, because there is no help whatsoever. Um, so many women don't survive, women or men, um, and sometimes the children are impacted. I think the truth is my children were impacted in my low mood or my depression. And so I started to understand a lot. It was at that time I saw um, solace in understanding what vibration was, really understanding how to um, bring up my energy and rewire. I became obsessed with the brain and neurofeedback um, in leadership and development and um, really working with your brain to get optimal results and so and this is why i say that you know the experience i've taken the best of what i could from it yeah um of course it wasn't great and um, but i really had i had a time where i couldn't even think about it without 
broken down. And what I wanted was to, re if I spoke about it, that I didn't relive it. And I think that's the most important part, that mm. you're not reliving it every time. Because it's tiring, you know? Um, and you also need to move on, reactive. right? Like it's, it's, a, it's a season in your life and it's something that will have, will leave, will leave um, scars. It does leave scars. Absolutely. And also, yeah. as you say, you know, maybe you wouldn't be, where you are now. And we had, you'd mentioned before we started talking that, um, yeah, that your, you know, your business ventures became your therapy. And we met in the context of, of an amazing business event. Yes, I was by speaking. Gemma Wendt. Yeah. You were speaking and Yay, Gemma, who's been my guest you. in one of the early episodes of the podcast. And she's amazing. She's amazing. And, and to see you with all of the knowledge that you have and all of the energy. And I mean, gosh, you could have, you could have filled those three days with information because you had so much you wanted to share with everyone there. And, and to see I you, I wouldn't, you know, it, it reminded me again that you never know, you never know what someone is going you through or has sense. been through never, ever. No. And this never. has come up repeatedly in, in recent podcast episodes where you meet someone and you think when you, that point when you meet them is one where you, you know them in that moment, if you get to know them quite well, but, but actually you really have no idea. And, and how can we absolutely no idea. <laughs> and, and, and what if we were more curious? Like, what if, what if we asked questions and then just left uncomfortable silences and saw what happened? What I'm if not, you know, not. What, what could bubble up? What could then be exchanged? How could we learn to hold space for each other in discomfort? How could we say, so, I don't know so how to help true. you, but I'm here, you know? exactly that and I've I've done that I mean part of what I saw as well was I don't think that you need to carry your story on you and you do see people you see people and you just think what would they be if they released it um and I don't like to judge but I have seen some people and they're like oh I can't do this I can't I'm like your self-talk honestly you know you're not giving yourself a second chance and what I said to my friend one thing I've taken from this is I want to love myself just like, you know, you wanted that from someone else. So I never want to treat myself like that. I want to check in and listen to myself talk. Am I being kind to me? And I think when you do that, you can hold space for someone else, but there's got to be a nice place. And sometimes if I, I hear someone saying, this lady said yesterday, you know, I'm so stupid and I wonder why I'm where I am. I'm so dumb. Or I was like, oh, don't speak to yourself like that. Be kinder. So, you know, just like, hold in space but remembering some people are just not ready to you mentioned you know that there is i, I want to just draw the um draw make a difference contrast between um self-responsibility that you're talking about which yeah. we have we yeah. all <clears throat> no one chooses to go into an abusive relationship not really and no. it's not your fault if you're in an abusive relationship no. because no. often gaslighters will choose narcissistic people will choose the most intelligent the most successful the most powerful people totally. to with because yeah. they they want all of those attributes for themselves or or you know to support yeah. whatever it is that they're doing so there isn't a lack of intelligence or a lack of worth or anything so i, I just i just wanted to speak those words that it isn't this isn't about blaming the uh, victim however i hear you no, you're saying not. in that it's you always have choice of how you treat yourself and how you react is that what you're saying that's why i'm saying it yeah. was i had a friend at the time and i you know you know like i said i kept it secret she gave me this tough love and I just wouldn't run to her because, you know, I was like, I don't want the judgment. And she said one day, you have a personal responsibility to yourself, to your children, to make yourself safe. And that has always stood with me because she said, you don't know what he's going to do. And one day he could do something and you, you're giving him more power than you're giving yourself. So when I speak about personal responsibility is that we owe it to ourselves to be loved. We owe it to ourselves to be safe. And if someone's not given us that, no matter how horrible it feels, we have a personal responsibility to give ourselves everything we want to give someone else. But we need to give it to ourselves first. So it was that talk, loves. you know. Yeah, honestly, it was that talk with her that made me say, gosh, she's right. 
and so yeah that's how I feel about that yeah thank you thank you for that clarification because I just I wanted to I don't want yes. anybody listening to feel like they are responsible for if they're in a, in a difficult we're situation. never responsible and like you say honestly I was one of the strongest people back then probably I thought I was but there is a certain personality trait and this is why I say that if they see just one little thing for me what the my perpetrator would do is I would confine in my weaknesses or something that had happened and he would use that against me. So quite often they use things that we confided in them um, against us. So it's, you're a victim because of that. And I don't, sometimes I don't realise how much of a victim I was. And it's like understanding that and giving yourself the space. And, and what a, I mean, talk about a phoenix rising from the ashes. You have created <laughs> oh. this an amazing business and you were saying that your business was like your therapy and that you have gone from this place I wrote down of feeding yourself with anxiety and so many of us do that right like we feed ourselves with anxiety about being on time about doing all the things about being the perfect mom about being good at work about being a good partner about being sexy enough about being you know all the things that we think that we should be and then in the middle where are you and you've even having been through this whole thing and built up this empire of, of business that supports mm-hmm. you and your family Aww. that gives you the freedom and the space to to be okay and have yeah. your needs met and, and more. it's still hard it's still yeah. hard and and you've gone from this people this this people pleasing attached to your self-worth to now being like no i need to take care of katrina yeah. like and stop so you this summer you stopped i mean it just going back to that beginning of the conversation where you said you just took time oh. and stopped my whole being is like Oh my God. Yes. Tell me where you get your mama fuel. And I would actually love to know where did you get your mama fuel back then? And where do you get it now? Cause I bet it's not the same. It's not the same. Um, back then it was survive, surviving and my children and my family. I absolutely adore my children and family right now because I've done it. You know, my mission my total mission, and I did put it on my timeline the other day, is to get people past the fluff and feeling stuck, and um, to empower and equipping people with the knowledge to monetize themselves so that they can create legacy and generational wealth. And, and that's mamas, that's divorcees, that's anyone that's been through an adverse um, situation. Because we feel powerless, we attribute that brokenness um, instead of attributing it to a breakthrough, you know, because that's often what it is. It's our design and thinking that things should be going a certain way when that could mm-hmm. be the route. So that, that's, my, that's my fuel now, just empowering people to, to do that and doing it myself, being an example. Yes. And taking that time to, to. to give yourself space to think and feel and express. Yeah. Totally. Uh, Katrina, I'm so, so grateful for you joining this conversation Aww, on Mama Fuel you. and so opening sweet. your heart and sharing a little bit of your story. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. I'll talk to you soon. I appreciate you. Thank Bye you. That's it for this episode of Mama Fuel, the podcast. Thanks for listening. There's a lot more conversation, sharing, and real Mama Talk happening in our private Facebook group. To join the virtual village, go to www.mamafuel.me forward slash Facebook. That's M-A-M-A-F-U-E-L dot M-E forward slash Facebook. And be sure to say hi when you get there. If you like this episode, or if you know a mama who could use a little mama fuel, and let's face it, we all have times when we're running on fumes, I'd love you to share this episode and to rate it and leave a review. The algorithms work that way. The more reviews there are and the more sharing there is, the more mamas will be able to feel encouraged and supported with the conversations that you just listen to in Mama Fuel. Every comment helps and it's always a super delight to hear from you. Thanks and bye for now.